how can a dark horse candidate help supersize your business? This is in the day of COVID, a dark horse disguise. And it's not really a dark horse, it's a little horse of my granddaughter's and I, I should probably have painted it dark like they did in the days of trying to pull one over on people from horse racing and that's where the name dark horse candidate came from. There's actually three possible origins of where the expression dark horse candidate came from. Could have been, um, and they're all from the, the early 1800s or the 1800s and uh, all from horse racing of course because there were at least three different possible ways that people tried to fool other people into winning races. One was in a very famous race. I'm not sure which race because it wasn't really specified and I didn't dig into it super duper deeply, which was me not doing my research and not digging into the uh, meaning of an idiom because I got to hang out with my granddaughter yesterday and that's way more fun than digging into what idioms mean sometimes. So. The first scenario, the first possible origin of this idiom is that there was a famous horse race and the um, one of the entries was kept secret or people were kept in the dark about its speed and racing statistics. So when the horse was entered into the race, it surprised everyone by winning because they were kept in the dark and they didn't know, they didn't have enough information about it to know that it could actually win because it was that fast. Another possibility is sometimes back in the 1800s, people would, um, an owner of a fast horse would actually dye its, its hair a dark color or a different color to disguise it so that it could enter it into races and people wouldn't know that it was the fast horse that they owned, that it, they would just think that it was another horse. And so they would trick people into thinking that it was another horse and then it of course would win and they would probably bet and win lots of money. The other scenario was about an a um, famous American horse trader who actually would disguise his black stallion as a riding horse, just as a regular saddle horse. He'd ride it into town. He would um, set up a bunch of races, place a bunch of bets, and then of course win every single time because he had this amazing racing stallion that he would disguise as a saddle horse. He would make it look like it was something else so people would be fooled. They would bet on other horses instead of his and he would of course clean up. So any one of those scenarios could be where the idiom came from. But it wasn't until 1844 when President James Polk won the election that the term dark horse candidate was applied to American politics. And ever since then, whenever an underdog in politics or in other areas or walks of life um, succeeds at something that people didn't expect or surprises us in any way, they're considered a dark horse candidate. So how can we use this in our business? How can we use this to grow and supersize our business? Well, several ways. Number one, um, what are some more examples of dark horse candidates? You know, somebody that we hire in our organization for one thing and then we discover they have this amazing talent at something else. Uh, somebody that is uh, a famous athlete or singer or has some amazing talent that goes undiscovered and then all it, of a sudden they're discovered. Think of all the shows on television now or in the recent past, like America's Got Talent, um, England's or Britain or Great Britain's Got Talent, whatever their name of their show is, uh, The Voice, American Idol, all these shows that seek out talent and then they have all these people that have been underdogs or have been not seen before in their life that are exploding in to the world. Th think of the internet and what that has done to um, find people that have amazing talents, dark horse talents in all different areas that we might not know about that because of the internet, because of the world wide web, because of our interconnectivity, they can find their people. They can shine their light. They can be who they've always been meant to be. Uh, but without the internet, we probably would not have found them. Uh, so what are some ways we can use this in our business? Number one, realize that a dark horse candidate doesn't have anything to do with politics and it really doesn't have anything to do with horse racing anymore. It has to do with can we find the gold or the diamond in a rough um, and make them a part of our organization and part of our business and how do we go about finding them? Um, number one, don't underestimate people and what they're capable of, right? Um, I always say hire for values and beliefs and goals and drive and motivation because that's something that you can't give to someone. That's, those are internal factors. People have in them the motivation or the drive or the uh, determination to achieve or do or be whatever they, they want. And you can't teach people that. 
that people can acquire that over time. But it's really, really hard. It's like pushing a noodle uphill, right? It's, it's or a flat rock uphill. So hire for the attributes and teach the skills and teach the, the things that you want people to learn or your systems and processes. But hire for um, the personality traits, the values, the, the core values, the motivation, the drive, this, the attributes that you can't necessarily teach people. Hire for those. Uh, look below the surface when you are making decisions or choices for your business. Uh, sometimes people look really, really good on paper, but when you interview them or talk to them, you find out that it's just the paper. The paper looks really good, but what they've actually done and who they really are and the substance that supports that, what looks good on paper, isn't there. It's missing. Uh, seek out ways to delight and surprise your customers, the people you serve, the people that you work with, your employees, all of the people that you interact with. Look for ways to, to delight them and surprise them in ways. Be that dark horse candidate, that underdog that they didn't necessarily expect. And that's how you win. You can show up in ways that people don't expect. That's how we beat the competition, by filling the gap and showing up in ways that they don't expect, serving people better than they ever could, um, and delighting and surprising them and making sure that they have an incredible experience that they won't have with anyone else because they're interacting with us and our business, our organization. So there's just a few ways I can think of that um, being an underdog, and to me, being a dark horse candidate is like being an underdog. It's like being um, underestimated or unexpected and, and showing up for the, in the world in ways that other people might not have expected from you. It's actually also very, very fun. So that's it. That's our idiom for today. Love to know your experience with this uh, and any you know bad or good experiences that you've had with this particular idiom. Otherwise, if there's an idiom you would like to know the origin of, hit me up in the comments below. We've done, I think, you know, 568 this might be today since I started counting them. So we've done a lot, but there's like 20,000 idioms in the English language. So there's a long way to go. So chances are, if there's one that you want to know the origin of, we probably haven't covered it yet, right? We've just scratched the surface. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it in your business right now? Take care.